Alright, hello YouTube. Uh, so this is going to be my first impressions video of OS 10 10.9 Mavericks. Uh, it's a name that I guess is kind of departing from the usual cat themes. Uh, although I would have preferred Sea Lion. Uh, it was a joke they made during the keynote. So um, I, I've had uh, a few hours to play with this. Uh, I, I really haven't uh, tinkered with it as much as uh, I probably should have, but I want to make a first impressions video just to show you some of the changes uh, and, and how I react to them at least. Um, so the first thing I noticed right away that was new was the new activity monitor and memory management system that they were talking about during the keynote. So if I open up activity monitor, I think it's probably going to be a bit choppy because uh, if you didn't know, screen recording butchers computers. I should probably uh, show you what the system I'm running it on is. So we're going to about this Mac, and you can see it's uh, OS 10, 10.9. Uh, the build, I'm not going to show you my serial number. So it's a 2.4 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo with 4 gigabytes of RAM uh, and a, a solid state disk. So the way I'm running it is uh, I partitioned my uh, solid state drive into two partitions. Um, one was 25 gigabytes just to run Mavericks, and the other is like my main 10.8 uh, drive. So, wow, this is really butchering my processor. See, I was thinking of using iStat, but QuickTime was just right there. So, uh, I'm sorry, not iStat, um, uh, I show you HD. Uh, I, I do have a license for it, but I haven't installed it on the, the system yet. So the first thing you notice that's different in Activity Monitor is that the CPU memory disk activity disk usage and network tabs that used to be down here are now at the top and it shows you different list views of your different processes. Uh, so things like CPU load, system user, idle, threads, process count. Uh, funny enough, you can't change the colors on these anymore, not that I can tell. Uh, unlike before where you could change use to any color you want, you can set the background color and, and the color of the, the graphs. Um, uh, now memory is where you'll notice the big difference. So uh, in terms of memory, it, it lists total memory, which makes sense, uh, used memory, virtual memory, swap used, app cache, file cache, wired memory, and compressed. Now compressed, file cache, and app memory are new categories, but what you'll notice is missing is um, the free memory. Uh, like, well, How do I tell how much free memory I have? Well really with 10.9 it's kind of relevant because uh, 10.9 adapts to automatically uh, uh, compress and, and free memory as your computer needs it. See, with previous versions of Mac OS X, I found that my computer would rather swap uh, to the hard disk and start using virtual memory when there was 2 plus gigabytes of inactive memory, uh, usually caused by memory leaks or different bugs. Uh, but now what, they're, uh, what, they have, uh, what they have done is they have a system called memory pressure and that just shows how much, uh, oh, there we go, uh, an indicator of the system's ability to meet the memory requirements of the user's activity. The higher memory pressure indicates that the system is reaching its limits and performance may degrade. So you can see right now it's really low. And even when running games like StarCraft 2, I haven't noticed this really fluctuate. I don't know if this meter's broken, but I haven't seen it go up or down by more than a pixel since I've been using this. So the new, uh, the new uh, category in Activity Monitor is Energy, which is kind of cool. It shows you all your currently running apps in black and your old ones in gray. And it shows you their average memory, memory impact and their energy impact, and it shows you your battery life. So you can see I was going on battery for a little bit there because my battery declined, then I charge it back up. Uh, you can see the current energy impact of your system, which is a pretty cool live feed. You can probably see the effect of brightness and different software on your machine. Right now, my energy impact is huge because of uh, QuickTime. Like my processor is burning. You can tell it's <laughs> 74 degrees. It's quite the cook. Uh, and then we have uh, network and disk. It's actually pretty nice because now I can list you um, network data on a per app basis, which was never there before. Uh, disk isn't particularly fun, and CPU is exactly what you'd expect. Um, I haven't gone to this menu yet. Probably not going to do it right now. System diagnostics. That might be useful. I'll check it out later. Uh, I'll probably have a follow-up video with a review after a few more days of playing with this, but right now I want to uh, kind of put this out there as soon as I can. So one of the big features that Apple to tooted their own horn for was Maps. Now, it was kind of a failure in iOS, but they have uh, generally been improving it. Uh, when iOS Maps came out, the Statue of Liberty was missing, so that tells you something. Now, I disabled location services because I obviously don't want my address going out there. Um, 
you can see it centers on North America. Um, it's pretty smooth, and it seems like the scrolling is uh, meant to keep gliding. It's pretty nice. Uh, it, it's kind of like the rubber band scrolling that you see, like smooth scrolling you see in the rest of the system. So you can see um, uh, it's, it's map software just like you expect. But apparently the difference is when you go into flyover mode, which I'm assuming is this button. Nope, satellite. That's not going to be it. Maybe this is it. Okay, well, uh, let's go to uh, the Statue of Liberty, New York. Let's see what that does. All right. That's what the eye does. You know, opens up a new window which you can keep around. Add to bookmarks, contacts, directions, report a problem. That report a problem thing is probably pretty nice if they actually pay attention to it. Get used to help fix it. Uh, and let's see how we do the flyover magic. Oh, now that button isn't great anymore. Oh, there we go. Wait for it to sort of load. Oh, that's pretty nice. Even the trees have an impressive amount of detail. I would have thought that the forest would just have a flat top because why bother tessellating all these crevices? But there you go. That's the Statue of Liberty. Now I'm using my trackpad and two fingers to rotate around it. And it rotates my field of view around the center point. Um, I can zoom in and out probably with the pinch as well. I'm using a mouse in addition to my trackpad, but... And so, yeah, that's flyover. Uh, I, I, I pretty much probably test this to see how it goes. Um, yes, I know you're not having my location. Oh, uh, how did I get over flyover then? I thought that was okay, escape maybe? Standard? There we go. Well, even in standard, there's a, a flyover. It's just not covered with uh, any sort of that type of view. Hmm. I'm not sure how to get out of flyover, to be honest. Oh, that's very nice. When you rotate the map, it snaps to north. When I got close to north, it snapped me to north. Right, like that. That wasn't me. That It just let go, and it, it snaps to north. That's kind of nice, because I'm very finicky about things being precisely aligned. So that's uh, maps. Next thing I'll move to is a little gripe I had with uh, Flash. So this is running uh, Safari 7.0 point something. And when I opened Flash, I noticed, uh, when I uh, installed Flash, I noticed that um, uh, I have imported my bookmarks. So I uh, see some of those are mine. Um, I've noticed that F Safari thinks that it doesn't have the latest Flash. So it doesn't seem to want to load it. So if, watch if I show. Uh, uh, well, then QuickTime is eating my system right now. I really should have done this in ISO UHD because they have a much lower processor uh, footprint. When you open a video, where the Flash YouTube Player usually is, it says "blocked plugin," and uh, when you click on it, it tells you don't have the latest version of Flash, and it links you to the exact same installer that I installed. I tried reinstalling Flash. We're starting the system, all that. If uh, Safari just doesn't like Flash, it, it works in Chrome now, because uh, Chrome is still an, an older version. I guess it's meant to be working with it. Uh, next, one thing I noticed is because I used a lot of uh, window management applications like Cinch, um, uh, I've noticed that uh, uh, enable access for assistive devices is now gone out of the accessibility preferences, and I can't find it. So I don't know if they change around the APIs for how uh, programs can interact with the Windows system. Uh, but right here it shows show accessibility status in the menu bar. It used to also show enable access for assistive devices, which would allow things like uh, applications like Cinch or Stay, Moom, or a bunch of others uh, to be able to help you uh, move around or resize windows with keyboard shortcuts or do the whole arrow snap like by taking it to the top, left, or right side. Um, but it doesn't seem to... Uh, want to show me how to do that, and I honestly can't find it. I feel kind of silly. And it's very badly documented because so few people are running this operating system so far. Now another thing, um, 
uh, that that is actually pretty nice is and it's about time uh, there's been a bunch of add-ons to finder that you could download before like extra finder spelt uh, xtra finder um, that will run within finder and give you multiple tabs and they'd be very nice and all uh, but now there's a finally like a, a built-in functionality for multiple files and like they like Apple said you can have uh, a, a different view on each one so this one's icon view this one's list uh, you can take finder full screen now uh, I think it's a bit overkill it's not particularly useful if you ask me um, but you can do it now <laughs> so yeah, you can you can have a bunch of tabs there you go uh, Honestly, this whole all my files thing is one of the default settings uh, for new tabs. You can change it. But it is honestly the most useless feature because if you've ever worked with any sort of website design or uh, graphic design, you have a bunch of files of different rendered at different resolutions and a bunch of folders. All my files is just completely useless. Uh, so one thing that, that is pretty annoying though is Finder by default hides the icons on your desktop. So if you look here in Finder Preferences, you get it from going to Finder Preferences. Um, so yeah, new Finder window show all my files. I'm going to change that to my home directory. Uh, this option is off by default. Show these items on the desktop. If you're used to having Macintosh HD, or SSD in my case, I changed it, on your desktop, uh, you have to toggle this option. Otherwise, um, uh, it's off by default and you just start with a blank desktop, it's not particularly useful. Uh, now tags is a new thing introduced in Mavericks. These are the, the, the default tags you can have. There's the colors like before that used to be called flags I believe in 10.8. Uh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, gray. Now there's work, home, and important which aren't colored. Um, but presumably when you pick a file, uh, let's pick iMovie, you can tag it if you have permission. Okay, let's pick one of my files. Uh, Random.dat. Oh, there you go. Assign tags. Show all. So what if I do something like... Oh, create new tag. That's very nice. It's very convenient to have from here. Okay. So, um, and then I've created a tag called test, even though I actually didn't click on it. That's strange. But if you drag things into a tag category, the tag will automatically be applied. And no matter where you are in Finder, if you click Test, now files with that tag will be listed. Or not. Wait, did I? Okay, let's tag it with the red as well. Oh. I hate when applications tag themselves. Honestly, drives me crazy. Uh, so I can't seem to be able to add that. I don't know. I'm not sure why. But uh, it'll be lo worth looking into. So uh, if uh, you have anything you want me to show off, uh, please leave in the comments below. Uh, feel free to subscribe. I might make another video to follow up um, on my experience with 10.9 uh, Mavericks. I do plan to use as a daily OS. That's why I put it on my internal SSD instead of an external USB drive or something. Because I want to be able to have it anywhere and work with it, and you know, really sink my teeth into it. Uh, some of the configurations by default are a bit hectic, which I don't understand. Like, uh, snap to grid is turned off by default on the desktop, which is just ridiculous if you ask me. Um, but once you kind of uh, set it up, it's a really nice OS so far. I'm finding the memory management is actually really nice. The the lack of the whole inactive memory and then swapping bug is nice. So you can see now my memory is. Uh, 2.98 gigabytes and, and, and I really like it. It doesn't show you free memory. You don't have to worry about it. It takes care of it on its own. Um, see if there was a free memory meter it would be kind of misleading because when I was playing StarCraft I had something like 20 megabytes of free memory yet I was still open to uh, able to open Minecraft in addition to StarCraft and I still had 20 megabytes left over because it just um, automatically compresses the memory and I've actually swapped uh, turned off on my system uh, to preserve my SSD life and I, I find I'm having no problems at all. Uh, so yeah, uh, thanks a lot guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. 
Uh, and yeah, again, uh, leave any suggestions in the comments below. I'll take a look at them and post it up.